Hello, my name is Ariane Edwards. Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to discuss William Edward Scott's artwork. I'm going to specifically focus on his painting title When the Tide is Out, while also including some close-up pictures to further talk about his scholarship as it relates to his painting. Scott used all paint on canvas and the painting was made in 1932. It is 36 by 38 inches and signed and dated in all paint on the lower left. This painting was exhibited at the exhibition of productions by Negro artists, the Hormon Foundation in New York in 1933. This captivating composition derives from Scott's early Haitian period. Scott was a distinguished African-American muralist, portraitist, and illustrator who depicted blacks in an uplifting way. Scott's work was included in the Harlem Renaissance most significant exhibitions, such as the 1927 Negro in Art Week show, which was the first all-black exhibition of visual art in the United States, and the 1933 exhibition of the productions of Negro artists. He turned toward the black working class and folk subject matter. He rejected the conventional portrait of blacks as slaves, hoping to reverse stereotypical perceptions of blacks and promote interracial understanding during the first half of the 20th century. While he was in Paris, he studied with Henry Osawa Tanner, which greatly affected his career. In 1931, he was awarded a scholarship to paint and study the African custom of Haiti's culture. Scott's work greatly influenced the direction of art by the youth who were the pre predecessors of the Haitian art movement. He made many sketches around the docks where merchants and fishermen came ashore at Port au Prince, which were later translated into larger canvases. His brushwork was more expressive and his palette became richer. Scott created visual synopsis of the appearance and work environment of Haiti's peasant class. In Haiti, Scott developed a style that contributed to his effectiveness as a mural painter. When the Tide is Out depicts Haitian fishermen and merchants at a dock engaging in their everyday labor duties. At the bottom of the composition, there is a woman with a headscarf tied around her head carrying a tray of oranges to bring on the boat. There are eight figures shown in this painting which are rendered through broad painterly brushstrokes. Painterly can be defined as the application of paint and loose visible brushstrokes. Each figure is depicted doing something which creates a sense of movement in a narrative aspect. He is using a muted palette consisted, consisting of dull neutral colors that are not as bright and using brown, yellow, and blue hues predominantly. He also uses a tonal landscape, which is an artistic style of a painted landscape with an overall tone of color atmosphere to create a ha hazy atmosphere. This painting mimics the crowded nature of Haitian life. He vividly displays the local color of the water and the way the sunlight hits it. His sense of organization and harmony are essential elements used to help unify the overall composition. William Edward Scott's figure studies of both men and women show that he has a great handle on rendering the essential character of the Haitian people. Some figures exhibit intense expression and a powerful presence. He also forces the viewer to concentrate on the figures, which is the key subject of his paintings. His elderly subjects are vividly expressive of years of hard work and the heat under difficult conditions. The determination, resilience, and strength of the Haitian peasants are summed up in these paintings shown. These are some of his most successful and dynamic compositions. He also incorporates a dramatic use of light in some of his work. Scott never followed the trend toward abstraction like some younger black artists did at the time. He steadfastly uh, adhered to traditional methods of painting. These are some examples of paintings that incorporate tonal landscapes similar to the When the Tide is Out painting. In conclusion, the way that Scott depicted the Haitian culture helped inspire a widespread 
our artistic turn away from racial uplift and the politics of respectability. He devoted his skills to expressing his pride and dignity as an African American. While in Haiti, he depicted various Haitians engaged in labor. Scott was able to capture the essence of everyday life and images of ordinary people. He elaborated on his interest in historical subjects by painting murals and portraits that summarize the tragedies and triumphs of African Americans from the Revolutionary War era through the Great Migration. Blacks gathered in Paris to build political and cultural links across national boundaries. His success influenced and motivated many other Black artists all around the world. That concludes my video for today. Thanks for watching.